Here we presents the top 5 best photo printers. Starting at number 5, HP Tango X. The HP Tango X is a small wireless printer that's made for home use. It's designed to work primarily with the HP Smart app using an iOS or Android device, focusing on access to documents and photos stored in the cloud. Tango X is unique in its ability to scan and copy from a photo that's taken with a smartphone. This idea may thrill smartphone users, but enthusiasm for the supposed convenience is likely to be dampened by the smart app's inaccurate cropping and the Tango X disappointing copy quality. Because the Tango X lacks a screen and traditional control panel, you will need a computer or smartphone to operate it. The Tango X lacks an output tray, which helps to keep it compact. After you fold down the cover to reveal the printer, you'll note that your prints exit from a slot and land on the cover in front of the printer, so you'll need to set the printer back enough on a table to support the cover flap. Because the Tango X lacks a screen and traditional control panel, you will need a computer or smartphone to operate it. Your PC or phone needs to run the HP Smart app before you can set up the Tango X. On the top panel of the printer there are a couple of context-dependent buttons. They are hardly noticeable until they light up, showing you their function, such as cancelling a print job or printing a status sheet. In comparison, the Canon PIXMA TS9120 also offers cloud printing via the iOS Android Canon Print app, but it also has a flatbed scanner, a memory card slot, prints on CD-DVD discs, and has a touchscreen control panel for standalone operation. Using a smartphone is convenient in many cases, but not if you're using it with the Tango X and have to depend on it for multiple functions. For more information and price, check out the product links in description. At number 4. Fujifil Minstax SP3. When we reviewed the Fujifil Minstax Share SP2 last year we had one big complaint, print size. The wireless printer, which uses the Instax Mini format, does a great job converting digital images to instant prints, but Instax Mini is, well, mini. The SP3 leverages the new larger Instax Square Film format, isn't that much bigger than the SP2, and is priced the same as the SP2 was at its introduction. The only real downside to moving to the larger format is that the film itself is more expensive. If you don't mind paying about $1.50 per image, then the SP3 is a solid choice for printing your favorite shots. The battery is a higher capacity than the one in the SP2. It's the same rechargeable NP50 that you get with the company's square format hybrid digital instant SQ10 camera. The SQ10 is supposed to be able to print images shot with other cameras from a Micris memory card, which overlaps some of the SP3's functionality, but in testing we found that it only worked sporadically. You can buy the SP3 in a black or white finish. I received the black version for review. Its finish is matte, with bronze accents, including the top plate, from which film ejects. LED indicators show the number of prints left in a film pack. The printer retains the angular design of the SP2. The power button is at the top, occidental to the film eject slot. A reprint button sits to the slot's right. The Fujifilm Instax Share SP3 prints digital images on square format instant film. It's a lot of fun, but film costs can add up. Halfway of my list at number 3. HP Envy 5055. The HP Envy 5055 is a simple all-in-one printer that's meant as a budget option for those with basic needs. Its flatbed scanner meets the needs of most families or students, but the lack of an automatic document feeder makes it less suitable for those who need to scan multi-page documents. It has a two-cartridge system, and both cartridges have poor yield, making its overall cost per print quite high. Also, it prints at a snail's pace when it comes to black and colored documents, although it's much faster at printing photos compared to other printers. Photos look decent, and surprisingly, the printer's color accuracy is excellent. There's no Ethernet or external storage support, but thankfully, you can perform most tasks wirelessly with HP's mobile app. The HP Envy 5055's design is subpar. It only has a single input tray with a fairly small 100-sheet capacity, and it isn't removable, so those with large hands may have a hard time loading paper. The main input tray is also the photo paper tray, which means that you can't load both types of paper at the same time. Also, the printer needs to be on when changing the ink cartridges. The HP 5055 has a terrible cartridge system. It only has a single color cartridge, and both the black and color cartridge run out quickly, so you'll need to replace them frequently. 
Luckily, there's a high-yield cartridge available, if you print a lot, and it's eligible for HP's Instant Ink subscription service. If you want a printer that can print more color and black documents, check out the Canon PIXMA iX6820. The HP Envy 5055 is a mediocre printer for family use. Although it prints fairly decent photos, it gets very expensive, if you print often due to the cartridge's low yield. Additionally, it's slow at printing black and color documents. The scanner only has a flatbed, so it's not the best option, if you need to scan long multi-page documents. On the upside, it has excellent color accuracy, and it's compatible with the HP Smart Mobile app, which lets you perform most tasks from your smartphone. For more information and price, check out the product links in description. Coming in at number 2. Canon IP8720. Similar in many ways to the Canon PIXMA iX6820 wireless inkjet printer, the Canon PIXMA IP8720 wireless inkjet photo printer includes one key addition, that makes it a very different beast. The Canon iX6820's 5-color ink system does a good job with photos, but it's still aimed primarily at business use. The IP8720 adds gray ink, which lets it print far better looking black and white photos. It also turns the IP8720 into a near-dedicated photo printer, and our editor's choice for consumer-level photo enthusiasts. To be clear, the IP8720 isn't in direct competition with more expensive near-dedicated photo printers, like the Epson Stylus Photo R2000, or the still more expensive Epson Stylus Photo R3000. Both printers are editor's choices as well, but they're aimed at prosumers and professional photographers. The IP8720 is much more of a high-end consumer printer. Despite the IP8720's focus on photo printing, it shares most of its design with the Canon iX6820. In particular, Canon says its ink system is essentially identical, other than the additional ink color, and extra nozzles to go with it. It also shares the same paper handling capability, with a single tray that can hold up to 150 sheets of plain paper, or a minimum of 20 sheets of photo paper, depending on which photo paper you're using. The maximum paper size is 13 by 19 inches. If you want the best possible output, and are willing to pay for it, you'll want one of the more expensive editor's choices, like the Epson R2000 or Epson R3000. And if you never print black and white photos, you can save a little, by getting the Canon iX6820, which offers a close match for color photo quality. That said, if you want a printer that can handle all your photos well, and you can't justify the cost of a printer meant for prosumers and professionals, the Canon PIXMA IP8720 wireless inkjet photo printer is the obvious choice, and it offers more than enough to make it our editor's choice for consumer level, near dedicated photo printers. And number 1. Canon PIXMA Pro 100. The PIXMA Pro 100 can print photos up to A3+, which is 133x193. The maximum print quality that this printer can handle is 4800px2400px, 4800px, which equals out to about 250pi on a 133x193 A3 Plus print. I love that this printer can print borderless so there is no white border around the edges of the print. For me, the print size of the printer is a standout quality. Many other printers in this price category can print this large, and for the style of prints that I do, anything under 11x163 is just too small to be very usable. A 13x193 print is a decent respectable size, and it's nice to be able to do prints that large right from my home office. I always edit my photos on a color-managed iMac 5K I do my color management with a spider colorimeter, which gets the screen quite close to the prints by itself. But the printer also comes with built-in ICC profiles which you'll see available in Photoshop and Lightroom, as soon as you install the printer. The profiles are specific to each type of paper. Since I almost always print on Canon Luster paper, it's nice to have it right there. The Pro 100 uses dye-based inks. In contrast to pigment-based inks in most printers, dye-based inks claim slightly improved color saturation, but at the expense of durability and color fastness of the ink over a long period of time. However, Canon is boasting 100 years of life in these inks. How in the world do they test that since the printer is only a few years old? Well, they don't. It's a guess that the marketing department embellished and the legal department tolerated, but the same is true with the any claim from any company on how long the print will last. 
Suffice it to say, however, that you'll be dead long before it's a problem. I have included these product link in the description. You can check out this link for more information and latest price. Thank you for watching this video. Please hit the like button. Share with your friends. And be sure to subscribe.